This is part two in my NixOS secrets management video series. Let's jump in. Our Nix config now contains the secrets and is pulling in SOPS Nix as an input. There are several files that leverage SOPS, so we'll expand on the diagram to show this. As you can see, we have a SOPS.nix file in the host slash common slash core section. This is where the initial heavy lifting is done. Let's take a look at how we can configure the SOPS.nix module as a part of the host level common core. First, we import the SOPS modules from the SOPS Nix input. Then we set the path for where SOPS should access the secrets file. Next, we'll need to configure some settings related to age. When we were setting up our host's public access key, we derived it from the SSH host key. So we need to provide the path to where that SSH host key is located in order to generate the related private access key for the host. In this case, it's located in the default SSH directory in Etsy. Next, we'll instruct SOPS that the related age access key should be stored at slash var slash lib sopsnex slash key.txt. And lastly, we'll set the generate key option to true. With these options set, SOPS will check if the key.txt file exists in the location we defined. And if it doesn't, SOPS will automatically derive the private access key from the specified SSH host key. This is important because when we generated the public access key earlier, we intentionally excluded generating the private key, knowing that this part of the SOPS module would handle it for us. This sort of automation is also important down the road, especially if we decide to incorporate something like impermanence, which is a topic I'll cover in a different series, but basically it deletes a significant portion of unneeded data from your system during boot. So with access keys taken care of, we can instruct SOPS to extract information from the secrets file. There are several ways to do this, and the most basic is within the SOPS Nix file itself. We'll add the MSMTP password to the set of secrets that would be extracted. While building the configuration, SOPS will copy the associated decrypted secrets data to slash run slash secrets slash MSMTP dash password so that the other modules in the config can access it. Although the data will be unencrypted here, it will only be accessible by root until we specify otherwise. Now we'll open up the optional msmtp.nix module and add the relevant SOPS information. First, we'll want to change the permissions for this particular secret so that it can be accessed correctly. In my case, the MSMTP client is always run as my primary user TA, so I'll set it up that way. Then within the typical MSMTP client options, we'll set the password eval option. In this case, the expression will cat the file at our MSMTP secret path, which will in turn be written to the actual configuration file used by MSMTP. Now let's look at a different example. One of our secrets is the password for the TA user, but we'll extract it and set the password slightly differently in this case. In the host level module for this specific user, we'll need to configure three things. First, we'll set this need for users option to true. As you can see, the line follows the same hierarchy as our MSMTP secret, but in this case, we're using a secret specific option that SOPSNEX provides called need for users. The reason for this is that typically SOPSNEX runs after users are created by NixOS so that the appropriate permissions for each secret can be set, just like we declared with the msmtp.nix module. However, this can't happen for user passwords because the user won't have been created yet. So the needed for users option instructs SOPNIX to extract the secrets to a different location. In this case, it's slash run slash secrets for users. This happens prior to user creation. As a result, owners can't be set for these files, and that's why they must be stored as hashed passwords as opposed to in plain text. The next option we'll set is users.mutableusers, and we'll set that to false. This is required for passwords to be set by SOPS when the system is being activated, and it effectively forces the user's password to be controlled only through the configuration settings. So with those options out of the way, we can provide NixOS with the path to our user's password. So far, we've been accessing our secrets using modules at the hosts level, but we can also access them at the home level in the same manner. For this example, we'll look at how a user's private SSH keys can be extracted from the secrets file and used to generate the private key files in their usual home user slash dot SSH directory. 
In this case, I've got a home level Sopsnex module in the TA user's common optional directory. This is an optional module just because I don't need to remotely connect out of every machine in my network. Similar to the hosts level module, we'll import SOPS from the SOPSNIX flake input and instruct SOPS where to find the access keys and the secrets file. To set up the TA user's private SSH keys, we'll instruct SOPS that the relevant keys should be stored in their typical location of home slash TA slash dot SSH. A side note on the topic of public SSH keys. While I won't be remotely connecting out of each host on my network and hence won't require these private keys on those hosts, I still want to be able to connect into those hosts, and to do this, I need to have the TA user's public SSH key data added to the authorized underscore keys file in the .ssh directory. To automatically do this, I store the public SSH keys plainly in the Nix config along with the host level user config. Then those public keys are programmatically added to the user's authorized underscore keys file. If that host is running an SSH server, which I have as an optional module, then the user will automatically be able to connect using one of the related keys. Now, you could also store the public key information in the secrets file along with the private keys and copy them to the authorized key files from there, but I chose to leave mine out, at least for the time being. All right, so we have our secrets stored securely, and we've set up the config to automatically copy the data where we need when building the configuration. Now we'll build the config on this host, but first, let's delete both the private and public SSH demo keys that I created. Then, once we're finished building, we'll be able to check and make sure that they're being populated as we expect. Now we can build the config and specify the host that we're on. We can see in the build output that SOPS is importing the SSH private key that we specified for the host and using that to decrypt the secrets. Looks like that worked. Let's check our .ssh directory and we can see that the id underscore demo private SSH key for that user has been created. Of course, we won't see the public version of the key in .ssh because we're storing it elsewhere and it will be automatically added to the authorized keys file on the host. To check on some of the other secrets, we can use sudo to cat the locations that SOPSNIX extracts the passwords to. In this case, slash run slash secrets slash msmtp dash password will print the plain text password that was stored there. Similarly, we can run the same command on the slash run slash secrets for users and the user that we specified to see the hash password for that user. Again, this is where SOPS will access the information within the config to actually populate it to the various areas that we specify in the config. Now we can run Home Manager and switch to our user. This is something that you might encounter, and I'm kind of glad that it showed up here. Every now and then, when you're building with the home manager, you'll encounter a systemd failure on the sops-nix.service. There are two solutions to this. The first thing to try is running home manager switch again with the dash dash refresh option. If that doesn't work, as it didn't in this case, you can run system control dash dash user reset dash failed. Once that's finished, you can run the home manager switch again without the refresh option and everything should be fine. Managing which keys can be used with secrets is quite simple. Edit your .sops.yaml file and either add, remove, or edit the respective public key information and key group list as needed. Once you've saved your changes though, you'll need to use SOPS to re-encrypt the secrets file accordingly. This is achieved by running SOPS with the update keys option. You'll be presented with a list of changes that will be made and can approve them or if need be, reject the changes and go back to the file and make the necessary changes.
That's a wrap for part two in the NixOS secrets management video series. In the next video, I'm going to show how you can store your secrets in a separate private repository as an added layer of security. If you're watching this video right after release, part three might not be available yet, so keep an eye out for it. And in the meantime, remember, the way out is through.